Significant changes in society, uh, the large cultural ones that we talk about, never happen easily, never happen overnight, and never happen without somebody pushing the issue. Never. Uh, and that's what we're really talking about here. Uh, we're talking about a large cultural shift, a zeitgeist shift. It's really part of the broader issue towards individualized medicine or personalized medicine, which is part of what I said before, this idea that yes, we're same and we're different. Right? Individualized medicine, personalized medicine, that's all an emphasis on the different part. Ironically, sex differences should be leading that charge. It's not. My first advice is to challenge the assumptions you're operating under, what you think you know about sex differences. Like you think you know that sex differences are small and unreliable, or you think you know that sex differences are all due to culture. These kinds of things. These are deep, deep assumptions. Or you think you know that sex differences aren't really fundamental. There's something we get to later. First, my first advice is challenge those assumptions in your own domain, because that's really the main impediment right now. Once you do, you're, here's what you're going to start to find, I guarantee you. You're going to start to find that in many situations, the sex of your animals makes no difference whatsoever. In others, it makes a moderate difference, and in yet others, it flips the results on their head. It makes this conclusion into this conclusion. And a priori, you don't know which it's going to be. And as you start to realize that, then you start to realize, as a good scientist, so I'm not justified in making the assumption that sex doesn't matter. It's a false assumption. So my advice to everybody is challenge your assumptions, start to realize what the data are saying, and then the rest is going to take care of itself. So this is not a women's health issue. It's really an issue of good science. That's what it is. It's really fundamentally an issue of good science and of medicine being data-driven about the science. So for example, why do we give a baby aspirin to people uh, with uh, heart problems. We do it because of the science says that a baby aspirin a day will help reduce certain heart problems, right? Except that's not what the data say. The data say that's true in men. It's not true in women. You can look at the data. And yet around the country every day, cardiologists are giving a baby aspirin a day for uh, women. But the evidence, the evidence does not indicate that it works but we're doing it anyways. The baby aspirin of the day does reduce the woman's incidence of stroke, not the man's. The point is, the cardiologists today, in giving a baby aspirin a day to a woman, are not practicing evidence-based medicine. They are not. They are practicing biased-based medicine. So this issue fundamentally is about bias, um, removing these biases and having truly evidence-based medicine for the benefit of both men and women. The good news is that it's all changing. We've reached this critical mass now. I really think we've reached a critical mass, not just in my field of neuroscience, but across the board, where people have seen enough sex differences from the functioning human to the cellular level, enough sex, step, sex differences that make no sense, but that can't be ignored, that people are, there's a, there's a rapidly growing consciousness that it's time to start pursuing these all the way to the clinic. Your question is where are going to be the clinical implications? My answer is everywhere.